Behind every face and every action, there's a name. And the search for those names, well, that's where these stories begin. I'm Fox 4 senior reporter Caitlin Knapp, and I'm on a mission to get to know the names we know and perhaps find the ones we don't, along with detectives working in the same communities you call home. We're all working to find answers and closure in these sunshine crimes. Not all of these cases are necessarily crimes. Some are people that have been found but have no name. So the students here at Ringling College in Sarasota are trying to put a name to the face. And the common theme here is all of the faces, well, their remains were found in Southwest Florida. Everyone starts their life with a name, but some are lost. These are you know, victims, these are the nameless, the, the forgotten, the, the skulls, the coldest of the cold cases. One man is on a mission to find those names again. His name is Joe Mullins, a forensic imaging specialist at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. His goal? I don't want any skulls sitting on shelves. The shelves of medical examiner's offices around the country. But a 3D image of the ones you're seeing here for the first time are all from right here in Southwest Florida. From the District 21 Fort Myers Medical Examiner's Office. Mullins made a cold call to the office, asking them for access to the skulls. Have to get the skulls. Now, once we have the skulls, we need to get, you know, take photographs of the skulls, then have the forensic anthropologist look at the skulls. Then Ringling College in Sarasota did a 3D print of each skull. It's at that college where those skulls have a chance of getting their name back. The other mission for this class is to clear the shelves of ME's offices across the U.S. Mullins is also an adjunct professor at New York Academy of Art, bringing his experience to Ringling's classroom giving students an opportunity to bring a family closure. This is the first face I've ever sculpted. Each person signed up for the workshop got a case. My person was found in 2016 in Lee County. And artists like junior Noah Shadowins works off the information from their assigned case. The only thing I have to work with is that he was an Asian male, age range 18 to 45. So that is a very large age gap. Over five days, they are turning the skulls into a facial approximation. In other words, a person. Every skull that they have is now in this room getting the you know, dignity of a face back. Faces being molded using talent and science. We stick markers on the skull and then we sculpt our tissue, our, our muscle and our, our flesh out to those markers. And over five days, you are slowly building a person that is going to stare back at you. A person waiting to get their name back. It's not a skull anymore. Now it's a person. And they are emotionally invested. And now I hope somebody can recognize them. Now that the schools have faces, let's talk about where they came from. Hendrick County deputies found this man in 1978 in LaBelle, and they believe he was a migrant worker. Glades County deputies found this man's remains in Moorhaven in 1980. And this is someone I've reported on before. The York Island Jane Doe, found off of St. James City in 1995. Deputies found these remains at Bonita Springs near Bonita Beach Road, east of Vincent Road in 2010. In 2011, deputies found a man's remains in Hendry County, possibly a migrant worker. The last cold case, someone tried to sell a skull on Craigslist in 2016 in Lee County. It's not clear when this person died. The more eyes that see these faces of approximations, the better. But now we have pictures of what these people look like in life. Again, the artist received the skulls from 11 Southwest Florida cases. Six of them are active investigations, while the other five are considered frozen. On Tuesday at 10, my conversation with Mullins continues about those frozen cases and what it means for the people who still don't have a name. To get a look at the faces you saw in this story, head to foxfordnow.com. And if you recognize any of them, call police. In studio, Caitlin Knapp, Fox 4.